Okay, so let's create our first content type. In fact, we have this tool which has three steps to get started. The first one is to build a content type. The second one is, of course, going to be to add content. And the third one is to expose that content to the world. So we're going to skip the tour because um, I'm going to go through those steps with you anyway. So the first thing that we want to do is create our first content type. Now I could click this button or I could go under plugins, content type builder. And notice that by default, I have a content type or a collection type enabled, which is called a user. And it has the following fields with these data types. And it's not something that you can change. So this is a built-in data type, but we can create a new one by clicking this create a new collection type link here. And that will allow us to create our own content type. And I'm going to call this, let's call it film. And notice that we have an API ID for both singular and plural versions. So that's film and films. And we also have advanced settings in here where you can enable or disable a draft published system, which means that you can basically just create, you know, content first in a draft, and then you have to explicitly press publish. And you can also enable localization, which you can, by the way, set up using the settings. You can set internationalization settings under the settings on the left-hand side. But anyway, so we have the film content type and we can select a bunch of fields that we want to add. And these are, you know, emails, rich text, text, password, date, so on and so forth. And I'm going to start very simply by clicking text. And I'm going to give this a name, title. And remember, with these steps that we're going to go through, we basically are building a schema for the film content type. Now, I get to select between short text and long text here. Now, based on this, best for titles, names, etc. I'm going to go with short text. If you have a larger, you know, corpus of text, then you can pick long text, of course. Under advanced settings, you will always find additional settings for the data type that you have selected. So for a text field, I could enable a default value, a regular expression pattern. I could make this required, unique. I could uh, you know, have a length of uh, a minimum or maximum length for the field. And I could also check the private field box, which will basically allow me to populate the field, but it's not going to be exposed in the API. I'm not going to change any of these, but instead I now have two options. I could either click finish or I could press add another field and I'm going to click that because I'm going to add another field and let's pick uh, the date type and I'm going to call this released. And I could pick from date, date, time and time and I'm going to go with date. And the advanced settings just to show you will be relevant to the date type as I said, right? So I can make this required unique, but instead of minimum and maximum length, I can now default this to a value. I'm not going to uh, do that. Okay, so I'm just going to hit finish. And now we have these two fields added. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause the video for a, a moment. I'm going to add the additional fields and then you can copy that and I'm going to move on from there. All right, so I've added director, plot and slug. Plot is a long text, just to show that to you. And the other two fields are texts. And once I'm happy with this, I'm going to hit save, Strapi will restart, and now my first ever content type in Strapi is completed. Now I could, of course, come in here and delete any of these, go ahead and change that. So if I now realize that, hey, this should be a required field, I could check that, press finish, and that would, of course, update the schema as well. And that's pretty much it. That's how you create a content type in Strapi. Now, next up, what we're going to take a look at is how to populate the content type with data using the content manager.